Natural resources are the price of modern life, and the Asia-Pacific spends more than the rest of the world combined. Resource efficiency in Asia has the potential to double or even triple. We can get more from less, but how can we recognize the opportunities? The United Nations Environment Programme, the CSIRO and Sydney University, have collected 118 resource use indicators for 26 countries in the region for the last 40 years. That's how we know that the region as a whole is extracting over 2,000 trillion litres of water per year. This is the rate we extract water in the Asia-Pacific region all day, every day. That's equivalent to 27 Olympic swimming pools every second. And this is the amount of metal used in the region every single day. That's over 100 tons every second. We have over 100 metrics, which means that we know precisely what it takes to build our economies across the region. Including the greenhouse gases we add to the atmosphere. Which is currently equivalent to 600 tons of carbon dioxide every second, all day, every day. That's about half the global total. Measuring resources can tell us more than just how much we consume as a region. Indicators reveal opportunities, economic and environmental opportunities. For example, how much water do we need to extract to keep the economy going? This is measured by how much water we use to generate each dollar of GDP. Here in Thailand, for example, it is this much. Looking at economies this way raises questions. Why should the water needed for each dollar in Pakistan be so much greater than in Papua New Guinea? How does the economy of Japan manage with so little water use? These questions wouldn't even arise without resource indicators, but the answers can provide the basis for sound environmental and development policies. What about other resources? What does it take to generate one dollar in the Asia-Pacific? The resource indicators show a big difference between industrial and developing countries. On average, in developing countries in the region, every dollar of GDP needs this much resource use. This much biomass, represented here by rice, fossil fuels represented by this coal, metal and construction materials. This is what it takes to earn one dollar in developing economies. It may not seem like very much, but multiply that by the GDP of developing countries, which is 6.5 trillion dollars. Now that's a lot of rice. Add it all up and this is the quantity of resources that powers the economies of developing countries in the region every day. The use of materials in the industrialized countries in the region is very different. Earning a dollar in industrialized countries takes less than one-tenth of the materials. For historical and structural reasons, industrialized countries squeeze a lot more value from the resources they use. Resource indicators give us new insights into economic development and the environment. As economies develop, the demand for resources will increase. There are huge variations across the region, which means there are opportunities for significant improvement. This is how much industrialized and developing countries consumed every day in 1990. Over 20 years, it has changed a lot. We can see the growth in consumption, much of it in China, and consumption continues to grow, which means it is increasingly important to understand how resources are used. Resource indicators raise questions and provide answers.
By engaging with data in this way, we can identify economic and environmental benefits across the whole region.